So this little video is uh, really a safety video. Uh, about five years ago I published a three-part series on this little Widowmaker off-the-line transmitter that was based on an article from a 1968 elementary electronics uh, publication which was a yearly publication and this little breadboard transmitter which actually operated right off the AC line with no isolation was a way that uh, some hams at least in this country got on the air now was it dangerous yes it was dangerous because uh, at that time they didn't have these nice IEC type cables that uh, at least give you a chance to understand hot, neutral, and ground. Now that doesn't mean that your house is properly wired and that neutral and ground are, are properly connected. At the outlet, I found that uh, about half of my outlets were miswired, so you have to be very careful and make sure you know what is what. Most guys that play around with off-the-line stuff are dealing with mains radios. Radios from the 30s, 40s, and 50s operate off the line. So you're going to be exposed to this problem no matter what type of uh, repair or radio repair you do. As long as it's an antique radio, you're going to run into this issue. So a lot of guys um, simply avoid the issue completely by not dealing with means radios that operate off the line. Others will get an isolation transformer. This is a good idea. This is going to isolate you from the line completely so that you can ground the chassis and not worry about getting between neutral and hot or uh, ground and hot. So I'm not trying to make trouble by putting something like this on the internet. I'm just trying to show radio history. Is this type of transmitter appropriate in the 21st century? I don't think so. But uh, when you're when you're talking about radio history, you do have to bring up things like this. Sometimes you do get a shock now and then. Somebody asked me, Mike, how many times have you been shocked? And I've been playing with radio stuff since I was a kid because I had a TV repair guy as an uncle. He gave me things he probably shouldn't have that I was playing with. So if you average out the number of high voltage shocks that I've had over my career, Boy, I'd have to be pushing a hundred, maybe a hundred. But by far, the worst shocks I've gotten have not been high voltage shocks. They've been the voltage between the line and neutral, or line and ground. So, just because something's only 117 volts, or 120 volts, or 230 volts, that doesn't mean that can't give you the worst shock of your life. So. Let's get into the Widowmaker transmitter and some of the safety features on board the Widowmaker. So tonight a little treat. Tonight we're looking at uh, a QRP station. Um, this is a Widowmaker transmitter. What's a Widowmaker? A Widowmaker uh, transmitter is basically one that runs directly off the line with no transformer and uh, in this case I am using a transformer right here and uh, the transmitter has a, a single tube it's a 50C5 this was written up in elementary electronics back in the 60s a one tube off the line transmitter so it uses uh, crystal control uh, we're on 40 meters and we're going to use the R390 receiver Pretty quiet frequency, 7036. I've got a 7036 crystal. Let's see if we can call CQ. You can see the uh, neon light tells me I've got RF.
let's see if he was able to copy. <laughs> He's having a problem. He got it. Good. So take a good look at the Widowmaker. The Widowmaker has a little neon bulb here. If you plug it into the line and the line is backwards, that is, if you touch ground on the Widowmaker and real ground, you'll get a shock. So with that neon light out, that means I have it plugged into the line correctly. And that will light up even before you turn the unit on. So that's a safety feature on this wonderful little transmitter. I'm using an oversized crystal, but it works just fine with the regular FT243 crystal. So, again, this was written up in uh, elementary electronics way back in the day. And, of course, uh, anything that runs off the line is bound to be uh, ostracized in this day and time. It really is not an appropriate type transmitter to run in the 21st century. But, in the history of radio, this got a lot of people on the air with a simple 6 -A uh, 50C5 final oscillator and a single crystal, you could easily make contacts. And as a QRP transmitter, if I go key down here, you'll see we're putting out a honest 5 watts of power uh, with this simple transmitter.